Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar on Bytes Backup for Office 365. I'm Danielle Chapman and I work in the marketing team at Bytes. Today I'm pleased to be joined by Martin Edwards, Director of Solutions Architects, Partners and Alliances from Druva, who will be presenting the webinar today. I'm also joined by Matt Compton, Head of Data, Data Management at Bytes, who will cover the agenda and provide a bit of an intro. Thanks, Danielle. Um, so, quick introduction. Uh, my name is Matt Compton and I head up our data management team at Bytes. What does that mean? It kind of means that there's three key areas of data management that we cover. There's the resilience side of things, there's the, the data governance, and there's the, the, the data value. And the, today, it's the resilience side of things that we're, we're talking about with our partnership that we've come with together with, with Druva. So, quick, quick overview of the agenda of what you can kind of expect over the next sort of 20, 30 minutes or so. Um, <coughs> Mike's going to give a bit of an overview of the um, solution itself, obviously the benefits, um, covering the concerns, and this is kind of kind of key. So um, with Office 365, and what we've seen, especially over the kind of last 12 to 18 months, is a huge uptake in people looking at putting backup solutions on top of the Office 365 platform. You read the fine print with any of the large cloud providers, um, the applications and infrastructure are provided for you, but the, the data is absolutely your responsibility. Um, and if there is corruption or loss of data, um, that, that's kind of not down to that, that, provider's, um, that provider's responsibility. And Office 365 is a prime example of that. So we've seen a huge uptake in um, Office 365 backup solutions, um, and that's growing at a rate. There's a number of different kind of tier one vendors that you will know of and have heard of that offer 365 solutions, and they all kind of do it a little bit different, differently. Um, we've decided really to partner and go big with the Druva solution, um, and Martin will cover in the details of, as of why it's the best solution in the market and why we believe it's the best solution in the market. It's nice, it's simple, it's easily packaged, it's a nice price point, it's very, very easy to deploy. Um, cloud to cloud and minimal impact to your um, Office 365 infrastructure. So I'll be back on at the end of the webinar to answer any questions that come through. In the meantime, I will hand over to Martin. Fantastic. Thanks very much there, Matt. I'll just uh, start sharing my screen. And thanks very much for that introdu introduction, Matt. Um, my name's Martin Edwards. Um, I run the um, solutions architect side for partners and alliances for Druva within EMEA. Um, I've been with Druva for around eight years or so now um, and here very much talking to you about one of the products that we do offer which is the data protection for Office 365. We're very proud to be partnering with Bytes in this initiative. Um, and um, looking forward to explaining a little bit more about how we see the world from an Office 365 perspective. So I suppose the first initial question really is, why do we need to protect Office 365? Microsoft provide it as a service. Um, so of course it's cloud-based and of course Microsoft are protecting that data. But in fact, the truth is, um, you're more at risk than you potentially think from an Office 365 perspective. There are five main areas that, um, that need to be considered for your data risks. Accidental deletion, so users accidentally deleting data. Um, insider threats, um, so malicious um, data deletion from inside your organization. Um, as well as administrators that may accidentally delete user accounts and so on and so forth. The third one's quite a big one, um, ransomware protection um, and the ability for ransomware to proliferate um, across your installation of Office 365. And we then come to more of the, the litigation side of things, um, compliance litigation. So the amount of time you are retaining data and the compliance associated with that, as well as straightforward litigation, legal hold, and e-discovery of that data. 
Um, if you look at the Office 365 solution as a whole, within your Microsoft Services Agreement, even Microsoft recommends that you re regularly back up your content through third-party apps and services. Um, Gartner um, also have highlighted that, you know, relying on versioning and recycle bins is not um, equal to taking regular backups of the data uh, contained within. And in fact, Gartner make quite a statement saying, assuming that SaaS applications don't require backup is dangerous. And in the same way as most cloud-based services, um, Microsoft run a shared responsibility model with you for your Office 365 um, instance. So whilst Microsoft do take care of physical security and the host infrastructure and the network controls, etc., when it comes to data classification, accountability, uh, client and endpoint protection, that very much is an area where you as a provider of that service um, are responsible for that element. And just moving forward, if we look at um, the standard data deletion policies within Office 365, um, we have a, a graph here that shows when the data is permanently deleted out of your Office 365. And you'll notice that in most cases, your data is permanently deleted after a month or so of that going. And typically, notification of a data compromise or a data loss takes around about 140 days on average before people realize that data is corrupt or moved or deleted. And when your data is permanently being deleted after a month, that does leave you open to an element of exposure uh, to be able to refer back to and get hold of that data. Oh, sorry. Just go back. Um, looking at accidental deletion. So within the native Office 365, um, scenario you are relying on your versions and your recycle bins which means you're limited to a 30 to 93 day retention period if you're looking at a SaaS backup solution um, regular point in time backups that can be retained for as long as you need it to be retained um, is the solution to allow you to recover that data from points in time where that data isn't retained within Office 365. Within Office 365, limited recovery options, whereas by using third party, um, you can retrieve individual items. You can retrieve in bulk. Um, you are in control of what it is that you are able to do. Um, Within Office 365, again, recovery times, especially under bulk re restoration of data, may not meet your internal SLAs. Utilizing third party means that you can recover in minutes. You can empower your end users to recover in minutes as well. Um, and you can be very flexible in the way in which you are restoring. And again, from um, deletions, deleted data within SharePoint sites or, or shared folders within OneDrive, those deletions are geo-replicated. So when that data is deleted from one location, you are then able, or the deletions then get replicated to other places. Having an independent and more importantly, external copy of that data mean that you can still call back and retrieve that data. Moving forward to ransomware, and ransomware acts incredibly different to data deletion. But again, Microsoft themselves do um, state that the versioning provided does not protect against ransomware attacks. Um, there are Microsoft documents that, uh, that, that state this. They also remind you as customers that you are responsible for recovery, not the administrators. Gartner again have come up 
with some statements um, around Office 365 and ransomware saying that organizations should keep an air-gapped copy of the backup repository to ensure that any ransomware can't infiltrate any backup solutions. And taking it one step further, the UK's National Cybersecurity Centre only a few weeks ago updated its guidance, emphasising that offline backups are the only way really to defend against ransomware. They specifically point out that the likes of Dropbox, OneDrive, SharePoint shouldn't be used as the only backup um, because those applications automatically synchronize any of that ransomware data, at which point your synchronized copies are lost as well. And they do state that organizations should ensure that a backup is kept separate from their network, an offline backup, an air-gapped backup. And Druva and Bytes in combination provide that air-gapped copy with immutable backups allowing organizations to be able to recover smoothly from any form of ransomware attack. Um, I'm not gonna read all of these um, inherent gaps out to you. Um, we can make a copy of this presentation available to you post the session. But really we're just highlighting that natively within Office 365, there are elements that don't leave you incredibly protected by taking an independent copy of that data not only will you have recoverability of that data but you can also do some more interesting things and get better insight into the data that you have protected so we talk a little bit about now the druva difference to endpoint data protection the first is we provide the best total cost of ownership to any of the solutions that are out there at the moment um, taking protection of Office 365 data. We provide a service with zero hardware, infrastructure, software install, software maintenance, etc. You can get going on the solution within 15 minutes. And because we are cloud based, there is nothing for you to install, procure, or provision internally. It's purely a case of setting up the solution, and that solution being cloud-based is scalable on demand. So should you need to add additional users, um, you acquire another organization, there's no need to worry about the back-end infrastructure related to your data protection. We can scale instantly with you. We are the most comprehensive as well. Today, we're predominantly talking about Office 365, but we can also protect your data in Slack, salesforce.com, and or G Suite if you're using that. And outside of cloud-based appliances, we can also extend our service so you can protect data that sits physically on laptops and mobile devices. And we can unlock additional capabilities like the provision of legal hold, um, forensics information, ransomware recovery, and indeed compliance where we're able to identify content of files within your organization. And all of this provided in a very secure and private manner. We are powered by AWS. We run and we are hosted within the AWS environment. But Druva also has its own um, services and compliance and certification on running cloud-based services that dovetail nicely into the, um, the accreditations that are provided by the data at rest. Encryption, data loss prevention, um, adds to the security of our service. And the way that we've architected the solution means that administrators and Druva cannot view data for a customer. So your data remains private. Um, we don't have any back-end access to any of the data that we are providing. 
Ultimately, we're providing simplify, a simplified user experience, allowing you as an organization to prevent productivity loss. A streamlined UI that we will show when we get to demo the solution from a single pane of glass. And incredibly easy for you as an organization to set up and run without the need of installing software agents and so on and so forth. On top of that, we do have ecosystem integrations. So we do tie in to various e-discovery tools to allow, allow you to protect that data or get the information of that data sucked into e-discovery. We also tie in to single sign-on through Okta and other SAML2 based um, systems. And we can manage users through either SIEM based um, applications like Azure AD, standard on-premise AD if you are still running standard on-premise, um, and integrate with Splunk for um, service management, et cetera. As an organization, we are the fastest growing cloud data protection provider. We have in excess of 4,000 enterprise grade customers built natively and recommended by AWS themselves. And we currently have well in excess of 150 petabytes worth of data under management. And one thing I want to highlight today on today's session is that with the current crisis that the country is facing, in fact, the globe and the world is facing, we do currently have an In This Together promotional offer where we'll allow you as companies to safeguard your data that sits within Office 365 and your endpoint devices. And we'll allow you to sign up for three months worth of free endpoint and Office 365 protection with no commitment from yourselves to ensure that you as organizations remain safe and secure during the impact that we are seeing with home working and, and additional data being placed within these remote working tools. And we can speak more about that or you can speak to Bytes about that following on from, uh, from this session. And now, I'm just going to spend a few moments giving you a brief overview of the look and feel um, of the simplicity of the Druva solution um, to protect your Office 365. So I've come into the InSync solution. Um, I am seeing a dashboard that represents all of my data protection amongst endpoints and cloud application, um, cloud application protection. From a data source perspective, what we would do in the first instance, if you were signing up for us, is go in and just configure your Office 365 to be protected within our solution. To get protected, we need to be transferred across to your Office 365 um, tenant where we will provide the correct permissions to allow InSync to read user data within your tenant. Once we've accepted the terms, we are then connected securely through the cloud interface. We do run through a quick check to make sure that once we are connected, we have the correct app authentication and the correct access to your Exchange Online and OneDrive. Once that is done, that is all you need to do in getting connected to your Office 365 system. We manage users within our solution through profiles. Profiles are basically rules that apply to any users that are applied. Now, those could be rules regarding the devices that are enabled and locations of where we're going to protect data according to those devices. It also allows us to configure the cloud applications. So in this particular instance, um, I'm going to protect data that resides within OneDrive. 
I do have a choice to exclude specific file types out of any backups that we're making. I'm going to leave it empty so that we're including all data for OneDrive. I also have the ability to protect Exchange Online for my users, where I can also select to protect recoverable items, so items in deletions and purges folders, so that we've still got the backup data from there. Once I've done that, it's down to selecting how frequently I would like to protect the data within the system. We can back up anywhere from five times a day down to once a week. All of these backups happen in a direct cloud to cloud manner. So there is no impact on your internal networks or your internal, um, or, or your internal processes. We can then specify how long we are going to retain data that has been backed up with the solution. So here, I'm going to retain every single backup that has been taken for the last seven days. I will then remove those and keep the last known good backups for four weeks. I will then retain a monthly snapshot of the last good backup a month for 12 months. All of these values are configurable by you as an organization. Um, we do not restrict you to the amount of retention that is held within. From an email protection perspective, we can apply the same rules that we have from the files, or we can basically say we are going to keep all mails, but only remove emails after a certain amount of months. Again, you are in control. This isn't something we are enforcing on you. And you can have different profiles configured for different users within your organization as well. So if you want to increase the protection around your VIPs, you can do so and reduce it for some of your other workforce. Once we've created a profile, um, I'll go back into my cloud applications and drill into Office 365. You'll see that within the Office 365 app, um, I'm then able to create users within InSync, and we can create those from importing them from a CSV file or linking in with your AD um, or your seam based uh, or, or your skin based. Um, uh, user management control. But I'm able to see all of my users with their exchange online. I can instantly see how much data those users have and how well protected they are. I can do the same for OneDrive. And indeed, we also provide you the ability to protect any data that you have within SharePoint and Teams. Okay. If I go into a Teams um, backup that I do have here, this particular Teams site, um, I'm able to see how many channels I have. I can see how updated my summary and my metadata and everything is from a protection perspective. And if I look at my backups that have been taken, I'm able to see all of the elements of my Teams site. I can even go back into any snapshots in the last 24 hours, the last seven days, or indeed earlier, to go back to independent snapshots of that team site. If I pick a snapshot of last week, it's going to show me the content of this team site at that point in time. And I have the ability here to either select the entire site, or I can drill down into individual folders or elements of a site where I can be selective as to individual files, individual conversations that I want to recover. Um, and I have the ability to restore this data either as an in-place restore into the existing site or restore it as a copy to a different location. I also have the ability to download this data as an administrator to my machine, so I can then import that data again 
um, into the same or another Office 365 tenant. Everything that happens on the system, we provide an activity stream where we're able to see information about what has happened at regular periods um, and download logs so that we can see further information that has happened. Exactly the same applies to SharePoint sites. And from a user's perspective, we take a user-centric approach. So if I select this one particular user, I now come into the user page where I'm able to see information regarding this user, information about the profile that has been configured, and I'm able to see activities that have happened recently within this account. And I'm able to see that this user has two cloud applications, the Exchange Online and the OneDrive. I can see when they were last protected. And I have the ability as an administrator to restore data back to this user, um, or indeed restore individual elements of data back to different users within my organization. For Exchange Online, I have the ability to search for any email headers. I can drill into mails where I'm able to see content. Um, and I have granular recoverability um, if I was to. Um, select this file, for instance, I can download the file, so I can pass it on to another, um, an, another colleague, or I can restore this to the individual user's account as a copy or as an in-place restore, or indeed select this file to go to a different user where I'll be able to recover that information back in to that site. Again, um, not directly related to the call that we have today, but we do have the ability to protect data that sits physically on users' devices as well. It's the same tool. All we would need is a small agent installed on the user's laptop device, and we would be able to protect their devices under the same account so that all of their data is together and recoverable from one single pane of glass. Within the system, we also have full audit trails for everything that users are doing within the system, as well as anything that admins are doing within the system. The audit trails are non-editable, um, and we can download the detail in HTML or CSV file for anything um, that, that we are looking for. Um, federated search is available within the solution. Whereas we can search all data that we have protected, either from an email perspective or um, a file based perspective, with the relevant filters that we would expect to be able to look from one location for any of the data that has been provided. We do have the ability for legal holds to be placed on users which allows exposure of data to legal teams or third-party e-discovery tools, as well as the ability for us to run compliance against data contained both on end user devices and the cloud, where we're able to search for sensitive data types that exist within your environment. So if GDPR is, a, a, is important to you as a business, we can go and easily identify any files that contain credit or debit card numbers near personal identifiable information within any of the data that we've protected. We allow you as businesses to create your own custom sensitive data types through keyword searches or regular expressions. But ultimately, and I hope that you'll see, the system is provided as very straightforward to set up and manage, but allowing you as a business to be able to see and make sure that you are protected um, and you have good backups of your data separate to the system that you're running. We also allow you to see the sorts of files that you are protected within your solution, 
and whereabouts that data exists from an end user's perspective. And hopefully that's given you all a little bit of an insight into what it is that Druva is capable of providing um, with the solution that we are partnering with Bytes to deliver. And from my side, I thank you for your time and your patience, but I look forward to any of the questions and answers that you may have from the solution. Thanks, <clears throat> Thanks Martin. And before I hand over to Daniel to uh, manage the questions part of the webinar, I just wanted to, to, to summarize. So as I said at the start of the call, there was a number of vendors in the market that offer backup solutions for 365. Um, most of, most of which give you the ability to be a backup application, but don't provide any backend storage, so therefore you've got to set your backend target up. Um, or that can be on premise or in the cloud. If you put that up into the cloud, then potentially there's things like egress charges associated with that. So um, why we've partnered so heavily with, with Druva is because it's a simple solution. It, as you've seen, it, 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 it works very, very well and it's built in with an AWS backend. Um, one price, unlimited storage, easy to deploy, um, and that's why we seem to have a lot more success with this solution than we have with the rest of the kind of vendors that we work with in the market. Um, so I just wanted to summarise that before handing over to Danielle. All right, thank you very much, guys. So I'm now going to open it up to any questions. So if you do have any questions, please submit them in the questions box. It's just the right-hand side of your screen on your control panel. But if there's anything else that you think of that you'd rather submit outside the webinar, just email us on tellmemore at bytes.co.uk. Okay, so I'll, I'll start with the first question. Can it back up blob storage directly from Azure without the need of running the software on a virtual machine? Okay, fantastic question. No, currently um, we connect through the Office 365 tenant. Um, we do have products um, outside of the Office 365 protection um, that is designed to back up server-based environments and indeed data that does reside within Azure. Um, so yes, we may be able to help, but from an Office 365 pers perspective, we want to keep the access and the, uh, the the access to the data and, and the connection to that data to the specific individuals, rather than just backing up as if it was a file server um, with with no relation to who it is that owns that data. Okay, brilliant. And can it also back up Azure Virtual Machines with its configuration template? Okay, again, I think a little bit connected to the uh, to the previous machine uh, or, or the previous machine, uh, the previous question. We do have a separate product um, that is able to deal with any workloads based in Azure, where we can take backup copies directly to the AWS cloud um, through our Phoenix product, um, but that isn't really related to the Office 365 piece. Brilliant. And are there any egress charges from for recovering from AWS? That's an excellent question, and I should have made this clear um, during my presentation earlier. Um, so no, the price that you pay for the Bytes Druva solution um, is based on end users utilizing the service, but we do not charge anything extra for any data egress or recovery of any data out of our solution. We package everything up so it's nice, simple, and predictable for you. You get the service, we manage the back end of that service for you. Um, and if you did have an instance where you needed to do a vast amount of recovery, you're not going to be charged anything extra from Bytes and Druva because that's all included in the software as a solution service that we are providing to you. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so we've had another one. As an organisation, we are required to ensure data is held within European countries. If all your hosting is provided by AWS, can you guarantee that the data will not be held at rest outside of EU borders? Another excellent question. Um, yes, we partner with AWS. We have about 18 storage locations globally um, that um, we can provide to you a, a, as a customer on request 
currently within Europe, um, including um, the UK, we have storage in Ireland, <coughs> UK itself, Paris and Frankfurt that can be selected. And as you are creating users within your organization, you can specify which location you are wanting that data storage to be held. So in your question, yes, we can provide UK and you can select that. But if we have any other organizations that have um, users around the globe, you can be very specific that specific users have data stored within specific locations. Okay, brilliant. And um, someone has sent in, I'm not sure if I missed it, but can the system pick up on the sensitivity labels already defined in Office 365 or do we have to recreate? And in terms of retention policies, if we have a policy to delete CVs that are over nine months old, how does the backup handle that? Okay, again, very good question, two parts, and I'll try and, uh, try and answer them um, in order as well. So no, um, we don't look at labels. The labels are part of the metadata, which we do back up along with the files themselves. But the um, compliance element of our solution is very much taking um, a content search against sensitive data types that we have generated within the solution. So um, whilst we will back up your tags um, within the metadata, um, that isn't part of our compliance solution. Our compliance solution is a scan and um, a, you know, a, a scan and report back based on the content. Okay. The second um, question you had was related to different retention for different data types, I believe. Um, yeah, from, that's right. From, from memory. Um, sorry, it's uh, too early in the morning for me. Um, <laughs> if you'd like me to read read it again, then yeah, just let me know. <laughs> re re repeat that part, and I will. Uh, sure. I, I'll, I'll yeah, no okay, so it's and in terms of recent retention policies, if we have a policy to delete CVs that are over nine months old, how would the backup handle that? Okay, great. So, so again, great question. All of our backups are taken as point in time. So we do not um, change our retention policy for, for backups um, based on a file type or a file content. If your CVs are being located within a specific, um, a specific location or a specific SharePoint site, let's say, um, we have the ability to set retention to that folder for a specific period of time, but that data is only recoverable data. So we would still hold those snapshots beyond that nine month period where data would be accessible from the backup. But we basically will take those snapshots as per whichever retention rules you place and keep the data within that snapshot for a set period of time. Brilliant, thank you. And is this purchase via Druva directly or via Bytes? <laughs> I think I will let Matt answer that one if Matt's still on the line. Yeah, absolutely. I can jump in there. So, um, yeah, it's purchased by a bike. Um, as I say, it's a simple per user per month cost model, um, and that includes unlimited back end storage. Um, as part of that, we also offer a free of charge onboarding service to help you get onto the platform and can offer first line support if required. Um, so, it's, it's really nice and simple um, deployment and purchasing. Brilliant, thank you. And we've just got another couple of questions, if that's all right with you guys. So, um, will you be looking to back up Yammer in the future? It's a very good question. It is um, part and parcel of our forward thinking roadmap. Um, I don't have any dates, but it is certainly something that, um, that we are looking to do based on user demand or company demand. Um, so, it would be very interesting to get some information from you um, following this call so that I can at least track that within our product teams. Um, so a little bit of information on the amount of users you have um, so that I can tie that request and add it into our feature request stack. Brilliant, thank you. And just going back to the blob storage as part of this question quickly. Um, so you're saying it does back up, back up blob storage by, by the user base selected backup? Correct, so we are, uh, so from our, 
Office 365 um, integration, we are reading the data, obviously, from the blob storage, uh, but we are treating all of that information as individual files that we will protect against that user. We do have a separate product um, that can run within workloads um, inside Azure um, that is able then to read data and back data up from a more server-based perspective rather than the Office 365 solution itself. And that could Brilliant. be on-premise servers. It could be servers that are hosted either in AWS or Azure. Um, it's a separate solution, which we're more than happy to discuss. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Martin. So uh, that's all the questions we have for today. Thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to join our webinar. I hope you found it valuable. And thank you again to Martin and Matt for presenting. As I mentioned previously, please do complete the feedback form at the end if you can. Thank you all again and have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye.